Killer Mockingbird returns to Broadway October 5th, and Jeff Daniels will step back into his Tony-nominated role as Atticus Finch. But before he does, he's starring in a new Showtime limited series, American Rust. I caught up with the Emmy-winning superstar. Man can have two reasons for doing the right thing. This case is poisoning my town. Someone's probably gonna have to take the blame for this. I'm so excited to have you back in all different in all different forms, Jeff. Talk about American Rust because uh, that is a show with another complex character, and it's um, you've done a lot of incredible you know, TV during this time. I've been on a great string of theater and TV since Newsroom, to mm -hmm. be sure. American Rust was based on a great book by Philip Meyer. Complicated people in a corner of the country where people have had nothing but bad luck, have been abandoned left to rust, if you will. And they're still good people. Just because they're poor, just because they're stuck in this town, just because they can't get out doesn't mean they're bad people. They're just people with good people with a lot of bad luck. We're excited to see you back on Broadway before long. I'm excited to come back. I was surprised. I, I thought I was done. And certainly doing Atticus for a year uh, I, I just didn't think I could, I would ever top that, and uh, and I wasn't interested in in trying. They called in June and just said, "What'll it take?" And and I said, "Well, one thing is, I need Celia. This is a this is a co-star thing, so I need Celia to be back as Scout. And uh, we've got some new people coming in that have never been in it, have never felt that thing that Mockingbird is when it goes. It's." Uh, it's a it's a it's a racehorse, written by Aaron Sorkin. I, I'm excited to to see those people fold into it and uh, rise up to where Celia and I know where it has to be, and uh, and they will. This could be a real exciting production, uh, uh, but I'm I'm thrilled that Celia is back with me. Look, there's a significance to everything. There's a special significance to to this to this play. Look, the play is still relevant. And I think what we've learned post George Floyd, when many people woke up to systemic racism, is that there's white entitlement, white privilege, white blindness. That the, the history you were taught growing up isn't the whole history. And that, that you've been kind of left, you know, uh, without all the information. While it's still from a white point of view, To Kill a Mockingbird, white people are the, the ones who need to hear it. And Broadway is, at least the Mockingbird audience, is predominantly white. When I stood on that stage, as I will again, and turned to the audience at the last third of that closing argument and treat them like the jury, no one moved. No one moved. The supposedly most sophisticated theater goers in the world did not move. Night after night after night after night. I say you read the book, you see the movie, you feel the play. And that's the power of Harper's book and the, the power of Aaron's play. Mm -hmm. And the power of you. Well, I ain't bad, you know? <laughs> I heard that about you. I heard that about you. The other thing too is, I'm coming back. I've already dealt with Gregory Peck. <laughs> I've already dealt with 45 previews with rewrites every other day. We've already dealt with the critics. We already know it works. All you have to do is relearn it. I was shooting American Rust this summer and I picked, I said, get me the script for God's sakes, get me Mockingbird. I wanna see if I can remember a word of it. And I had act one in a day. Wow. I can roll the closing argument right now. It's, it's still there. It's like the lyrics to that song you loved, you know? Right. And oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, boom, and it's there. That's the hard part of Sorkin is the memorization and uh, that's behind me. So when I meet the new members of the cast who are looking at this epic play, I'm going, let me know when you're off book. Let me know when you stop sweating. Yes, uh, and it, there is sweat involved. There is flop sweat involved. I've had it, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, every time I watch Sorkin, I'm like, I gotta remember that, write that down. I can't remember I two seconds after I've heard it. Is there a, is there a secret to Sorkin? There are ways to make it easier. Uh, the hard work is the repetition. You learn that in the theater. 
Theater teaches you to memorize it, memorize it word for word. Do not ad lib. Don't bring in your ideas and paraphrase because in my case, Lanford Wilson will stand up and go, stop it. <laughs> he will, stop doing that. I didn't write that word. <laughs> and so you have a respect for the written word. And that's Sorkin's deal too. Don't change a word. And you have to do it at a, at a pace, a hundred mile an hour pace. I talked to Allison Janney and I said, how did you memorize West Wing? And she said there was a trick some of us had where if you have a sentence with the words like refuse and remember in the sentence, you circle the RE of refuse and the RE of remember. If you have a sentence that has three P's in it, sometimes writers use alliteration and or just two or three things in it, even if it's a long, you circle, circle, it's like stones across a river that you get to this one, then you get to that one, then you get to that one. And that can get it into the mechanics of it, of the words in this order. All of that happens when you rep it, rep it, rep it, rep it, rep it, like you do when you do theater eight times a week, month after month after month. We kept hiring theater people. On American Rust, the show I did, I, I, well, we lost the guy who's gonna play this one character. Can we I get a theater guy? Theater people can handle the dialogue. And you need and that. Damned if these people didn't show up off book every time, ready to go on take one. Mm -hmm.